Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, and save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. And let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, Grant, we beseech you, that meditating upon these mysteries of the Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The announcements for this weekend 
This weekend, we are collecting donations in the locked boxes at the church doors for the Knights of Columbus Tootsie Roll Drive, which benefits our brothers and sisters with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And then this Monday, the 28th, Buffalo Wings and Rings in Bedford will be donating 5% of their sales to the Knights of Columbus Tootsie Roll Drive. Please patronize the Buffalo Wings and Rings on Monday, too. Discover the biblical basis of the Eucharist and the Mass more fully. All are invited to attend a Bible study on the Eucharist in the St. Vincent de Paul Room, 7 p.m. Mondays, September 11th through November 13th. For details and registration and information, see the bulletin. Everyone is invited to pray before Jesus in our Adoration Chapel. There are several weekend hours available, and substitute adorers are always needed. See the bulletin for details. Please stand and join in singing our processional hymn number 599, God We Praise You. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, God calls us to witness for Christ as we are called to bring the mission of Christ through our lives. Let us go forth and profess and proclaim that Jesus Christ is a Savior so that all people may believe through our lives, through our examples of that we set in our lives. Let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you called fishermen to follow you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you gave Peter the key to your kingdom. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord 
Jesus, you opened heaven for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe, and gird him with your sash, and give him over 
to your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key to the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. 
Or who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. In our first reading today, God says, He will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder, And when he opens, no one shall shut. And when he shuts, no one shall open. Wow, that's a blessing. Then in our gospel, after Peter confesses that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, Jesus tells Peter that he will give him the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now we all know that keys are important. They allow access to our most valuable possessions and entry into the most important places of our lives. We guard them closely and only give them to those who we believe to be completely trustworthy. 
In both of today's readings, the keys given by God represents his gifts of power and authority. They are taken away from those who use them for personal gain, but given to those who serve the Lord and bless others. Without knowing the lead-in verses to today's first reading, we don't have a good understanding of what is really going on. These verses are significant because they explain exactly what's happening. They tell of the prophecy against Hezekiah, the king of Judah, and the court official Shebna, who were celebrating the departure of the Assyrians from occupying their land. Now you would think that the defeat of an enemy occupying your land and ruling your people should be cause for, for great celebration. But in this case, the prophet Isaiah is upset because of how their enemy's retreat was accomplished. King Hezekiah and his palace master, Shebna, they had a choice. They could have trusted in the Lord's offer to go before them and defeat the Assyrians as God promised. But they chose instead to form an alliance with surrounding nations who were going to be subject to the Assyrian rule. Against the prophet Isaiah's strong objection and God's desire to take them under his wings and give them victory over the enemy, they chose to align themselves with the other nations. In other words, choosing political expediency and the lure of power in numbers over trusting in their God. In the pursuing battle, many of Judah's men were killed, but it did not have to be that way. Had King Hezekiah and Shebna followed God's plan for victory, far fewer, if any, lives would have been lost. So King Hezekiah and Shebna, instead of mourning the lives of those who lost their lives in battle, they flaunted their arrogant disobedience by rejoicing over the costly victory. This first reading focuses on the responsibility that God has entrusted for his chosen leaders. God is acting on behalf of the good of these people to replace the ungodly rulers with the ones who will act obedient to God's will. This is where we should note the similarity in languages of confidence spoken to Peter by Jesus when giving Peter the keys to the kingdom in today's gospel. Blessed are you, Simon. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. St. Peter is one of the great pillars of the church. Peter played an incredibly essential role in the establishment of the early church. We know that Peter was a family man, a local fisherman, uneducated, quite ordinary. In fact, just like us. From what we know about Peter, Prior to being called by Jesus, there was nothing that made him uniquely qualified to become a pillar of the new church, a church that was to be established by the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus simply called him, and he responded. We hear when Jesus ordered Peter to lower his nets and produced a huge catch of fish, that is when Peter fell down at the feet of Jesus and acknowledged that he was a sinful man who was unworthy of being in Jesus' presence. With that show of humility and understanding, Jesus then informed Peter that he would from now on be a fisher of men. Peter's response was to leave everything behind and follow Jesus. 
It's important to note that Peter was considered by many a very unlikely one to be one of the founders of the church, but that's exactly what he became. Peter's role was truly a unique one. As we heard, Jesus changed Peter's name from Simon to Peter. So in actuality, Jesus was making Peter a solid foundation on which a church would be built. You too, like Peter, have been called by God to a unique mission within the church that has not been entrusted to anyone else. God wants to use you in your own way to reach certain people as he did with St. Peter. And like St. Peter, God wants to continue to establish his church upon you and your faith. Today, we should reflect that Peter was indeed a unique pillar of our church. But this should lead us to consider how God may want to use us as well. Each one of us here have keys of influence, keys of authority, keys of responsibility, and even keys over the lives of others. Are we bringing our knowledge of God and His love to our spouse, to our children, to our parents, to our neighbors, our parishioners, colleagues at work, and anybody that has a weak, that is weak in faith? So we too all have keys and are called to be unique pillars of the church so that we, like Peter, can change the world in which we live. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. As we are called to bring Christ in through our lives, let us ask for God's graces and blessings. For the church, as she grows and changes in our ever-evolving world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our neighbors, as we learn to care for one another better, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who are questioning and doubting that God reveal himself in their search, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear yeah, us, For the poor souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear yeah, our prayer. Carl and Judy Gody are being especially remembered at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear yeah, our prayer. God of love and mercy, open our hearts and minds so that we may allow Christ to stay in our hearts, in our homes, in our country so we may be able to bring Christ to be known 
through our worthy way of life, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn number 713, I Has Not Seen. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be of God Almighty, Father. May the sacrifice us as our hands. O Lord, 
who gain for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offer once for all bestow graciously on us we pray the gifts of unity and peace in our church through Christ our lord the lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to lord our god It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord holy father almighty and eternal god for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons you formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in in your name over all you have made and for ever praise you and your mighty works through Christ our lord and so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim indeed holy o lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the, power, by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting your pure sacrifice may be offered to your name Therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts you have brought to you for our consecration that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries for on the night he was betrayed he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended He took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples say take this all of you and drink from it for this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new an eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you were to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with the elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Vincent de Paul, our patron, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Charles Thompson, our Archbishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, Carl and Judy Goti, whom you have called from this world to yourself to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed the name, thy kingdom come, hallowed be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of deliverance, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, you may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, to the power and glory are yours in our forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with their world, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with your dick.
gluten-free holes or is a loop. Sometimes you take this, sometimes you don't. Please speak to Alex. Elizabeth, please be with you. Please be with you, John. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes over the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to surrender under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing number 631, Father, we thank you who have planted.
Please join in singing number 264 from the Cross Generation book. O oh, taste and see. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for a moment. I would like to invite Mr. Greg uh, Stanley, 
one of our knights to come forward to appeal to us about the mission of our community to serve our local community. Imagine that you are a child that is non-verbal. You are physically incapable of speaking. But like everyone else, you still need a way to communicate with your teacher. Or perhaps you're very intelligent, but prone to sensory overload from normal background noise in the classroom, and will occasionally experience a meltdown unless you have a calming place that you can escape to. Still yet, you may be a child that does well in the classroom, but sits on the sidelines during recess because you have a physical impairment and there's no playground equipment that will allow you to safely join in the fun. Good morning, I am Greg Stanley with the Knights of Columbus and that is exactly what our two-year-old drive is all about. It's about raising funds for special education tools that will give children and adults with a disability a better chance for success. And we've been doing this in our community now here in Bedford for 46 years. This year we'll be helping more organizations than ever that serve children and adults struggling with a disability, including our own St. Vincent de Paul School, North Lawrence Community Schools, Mitchell Community Schools, Lawrence County Independent Schools in Fayetteville, Springville Community Academy, the Lawrence County ARC, and Lawrence County Special Olympics. The dollars that these organizations receive will be used to purchase resources they may not be able to fund from their normal operating budget. And we're not just talking about helping a few people here. North Lawrence Community Schools has approximately 750 students from pre-kindergarten through 12th grade that qualify for special education. And Mitchell Community Schools puts that number at about 90. And all those smaller schools like St. Vincent, Fayetteville, and Springville may not have a special education department. They all have children that will struggle and fall behind without access to the learning aids that we help to fund each year from Tootsie Roll Drive proceeds. Our drive also supports the Lawrence County ARC, where mentally challenged adults can learn job skills and earn a paycheck. The people that benefit each year from the Tootsie Roll Drive face a range of disabilities that are as unique as the individuals themselves and can include anything from a learning delay to autism spectrum disorder, severe cognitive disabilities, multiple disabilities, orthopedic impairment, and traumatic brain injury. This year's drive will help fund implementation of a multi-sensory or calming a room at Bedford North Lawrence High School a special education curriculum for Lawrence County Independent Schools, sensory tools for the Springville Community Academy, instructional aids for St. Vincent de Paul School, and the summer games participation costs for Lawrence County's Special Olympics athletes. We'll also be helping to fund development of a life skills classroom at Mitchell High School. We cannot take away a person's disability, but working together, we can provide them with tools to better cope with that disability and consequently a better chance for success. There are collection boxes at each of the doors for your donation and of course Tootsie Rolls as well. If you'd like to write a check, just make it to St. Vincent's and put Tootsie Roll on the memo line. Please be generous. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Greg Stanley, for a great appeal. Um, I, will, I would like to appreciate all our knights uh, for Paris. They have a great charism of carrying out this mission for a long time. And I appreciate and thank all the knights of our uh, parish. So they have been a blessing to us, too. This coming Friday, we will have the first Friday adoration at 2.15 in the afternoon. So those who like to be part of it, receive a special blessing on the first Friday, which is consecrated to the most sacred heart of Jesus. 
consecrating our family is a great way that we put ourselves more in the presence of God and receiving many many blessings through the sacred heart of Jesus so kindly make a time to come for the mass in the morning 8:15 on Friday first Friday and then the afternoon for the first uh, first Friday adoration and benediction the lord be with you and with your spirit may may god bless you all the father the son the holy spirit Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our hymn of sending forth number 687 How firm a foundation. <laughs> 